Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I have struggled to make the ion engines work mightily and I think I have a fix but before that we have to bring down the mini star which we left in orbit in the previous video. So we are going to test re-entry with this and see how it goes. So we are trying to get to my standard one and a half hour orbit in order to make sure that in future occasions, when we bring this down, the same thing will happen. I wonder if I should just use the OMS engine on Mini Star instead of these. Okay, we are now in. pushing back here, a one and a half hour orbit. And now we'll try to phase with the KSC, but we don't have that much electric charge. Uh, it seems to be one unit per second, so that's 10, I mean the total 3,000, uh, sorry, 36,000 would be 10 hours worth. I think the KSC, or sorry, Tampico, I forgot we are landing at Tampico. Um, Tampico will probably get over here in 10 hours, I think. Oh, alright, we'll start the fuel cell. But we're getting low on fuel here. And this time. Okay. Well, Tampico's a little bit ahead of Cape Canaveral, of course. So we're going to try to do the retro burn a little bit earlier than I normally would. Uh, let's say 120 degrees. Using the Mini Stars OMS. I'll bring it down to zero kilometers. Okay, decoupling the adapter attachment. Off it goes. It is on a suborbital trajectory. Oh, I, I would like to fizz warp with this, but of course that has the potential for throwing everything off. Okay, we're getting our first bunch bounce up here at about 74,000 meters, 74 kilometers. We're still over the Pacific, a fair distance away. We're at 7,000 meters per second. Over the Gulf of California, and uh, we are getting our second hop here. We've bled off quite a lot of speed, and we're still just gently floating down. It looks like we're going to overshoot. And we're way north of Tampico anyway. Actually, that's Boca Chica there. I think I aimed for the wrong thing. Okay, I think we should probably pitch down now. Though it's really well balanced. But we'll probably stall if we keep up like this. I still don't actually understand why it doesn't seem to use any actuation or much actuation at all. It's. I mean, I know I've got huge... Uh oh It's wobbly. Um... Well, let's just see if we're like that. Yeah, putting a negative pitch like that is not good. Yeah, we have few jaw moving surfaces, but still. It's very little control that we're using. Okay, switching to atmospheric autopilot. And we can turn RCS off. Well, it's gonna be a splashdown, and it's gonna be a splashdown here. About 87, well, 88 degrees west. All right. A bit of a rough splashdown, but it is actually intact. Um, according to Kerbal rules, we can recover this. Okay, so now what I want to do is see if my ion engine changes have actually... It's actually the reactor on the ion engine stuff has made the ion engines work properly. And so we're gonna check back on the other vessels that we've launched to see if maybe they're, they're actually usable or not. Or maybe the changes I made didn't actually get applied to them because their configuration changes and maybe 
you can't you need to launch a new craft for those to be applied. So let me try and let me see what we've got here. We do have ion engine. So now this ISRU rig. Well, it's actually got diminishing electric charge. Um that doesn't seem right. Hold on, let me retract radiator. <laughs> Well, it doesn't seem to be producing power. Theoretical supply 1.377 megawatts. Oh, it probably needs the uranium, right. Because the way I had implemented the reactor previously was by using a module called module generator. And basically it just said, okay, provide this amount of power. It just wrote it in and so it would provide 400 kilowatts. So it was just a one line thing and it didn't actually use uranium. Uh, now I've decided to edit that so that it uses the way that KSB Interstellar wants power to be generated from reactors. I just copied one of its reactor modules and that does require uranium. Since this doesn't have uranium, it's not gonna produce the power. So yeah, our old, old craft still will not be able to use the ion engines. Yeah, it occurs to me that the same problem is going to happen with the St. Louis and the Joplin. So we need to replace the back end of both ships or supply them with uranium, I think. I think that will solve it, but I'm not sure. I guess the easy thing to do would be to send up a little module with uranium to the Joplin and dock it to the Joplin and see if that works out. Oh, actually, the St. Louis already has enriched uranium. Does that actually work for these then? Uh, no? Hold on. Let's test that. It has enriched uranium. I don't know if the reactor can use enriched uranium or whether it's some other form of uranium. I suppose it must be enriched uranium. Well, it's supplying something. Let's see. 200 kilowatts there. The expected thrust from the two ion engines is 1.465 kilonewtons if we were using full power which is 200 uh, kilowatts so this looks like it's the full power and actually we want to bring it down let's just verify okay periapsis is going down but then it did before because the solar panels provide power but i think there's much more thrust than we were getting with the tiny solar panels before well these are pretty big uh, even these bigger ones up front produce only 10 kilowatts whereas we're getting the full 200 kilowatts now okay it really probably didn't require me to use the KSP interstellar module why is oh right I turned off RCS um, it probably didn't require me to use the full KSP interstellar module to fix this with these ships for the ion engines probably all I needed to do was something like adding megajoules or something some resource it was looking for that was missing and it would have been happy with that but yeah let me just check on the Joplin to see that it works properly with the full thrust that is expected and then we can proceed with other things well that seems fine and the number is correct that we have here we're getting the correct thrust and we should get that on the nighttime side as well and not have that problem again Okay, yeah, same thrust at nighttime side, so it's not solar panels or anything, and it's still doing the thing uh, during time warp, even though it doesn't show the thrust there. Stage time is the same. Okay, everything is looking good as far as the solution is concerned, so we can get on with our business without worrying about the ion engines ever again, hopefully. Okay, back to Space Center. Some, do we want to still try a series we've had some series failures serious failures series failures um maybe we can still squeeze something in just about manage it to make up for all the other stuff but what do we want, want to send i guess we could try the isr unit again i'm still launching because say core alone i'd be less dodgy if i launched with the boosters probably um, do I have uranium now? No, I don't. Does anyone have uranium? Do I have, I have to pull this all apart 
to get the uranium. Uh, that was the moon version. I mean, Ceres is like a moon. Ah, uh, enriched uranium there. No enriched uranium here. Okay. Uh, can I do surgery on this? Okay. Ignition. That's all coming through my right ear. The sound. The sound is all panned to the right for some reason. I don't know why. I'll probably fix that in video editing so it doesn't bother viewers. Okay, we should be past max Q. And stage separation. I forgot the separatrons. Ignition. Oof. Okay, yeah. We really need to remember the separatrons on that. Okay, fairings. Alright, we continue. We don't need that. Okay, that's that stage, and let me just keep that safe. We want the RCS thrusters as well. Mm, RCS forward. Okay, no, no, don't do too much. Okay, not quite as efficient an arrival in orbit as I would have liked, but we are getting to orbit here. And then we'll sort out our transfer. And then finally we'll be done with series one way or another for a while. I mean, until they get there. I just really like this transfer window to series because it's at the ascending node here, so that makes it convenient. Okay, selling the fuel down for our series transfer. It's a little bit tight though, but we're on the Apoapsis side, so it's okay, I think. We'll need 700 from the ion engine though. Okay, um, ion engine time, but now we have to reorient everything, so let's, I guess we'll get the RCS on here again. Lots of stuff here, uh, half of this stuff is probably the reactor, now that I've put the KSB interstellar version on. Even the RCS is technically an interstellar RCS, because KSB interstellar, it's all, all KSB interstellar at some point. Okay, well we lose our node or do we keep the node? We, well, no reset, so let's get rid of that. We'll have to readjust everything anyway. Okay, so not the spherical tank. We need to control from here. Control from here. Oh, I guess we already are, hopefully. Okay, let me activate that. Okay, shut that down for a sec. Let me plot in the hope that it will work, work properly. We should only get 700 newtons out of this particular unit. Okay, we have an encounter there. Gosh darn it. Xenon gas. Okay, we're using... we're supposed to be using xenon gas, but it's not using xenon gas, is it? It says maximum thrust in space. That's the right number. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna try and... Go away from it and come back to it. I don't know. Tracking station. Oh, now it's got 700 newtons. Okay. Pointing at the node. Alright. Time warp. Our orbit appears to be changing. And we're burning down. Okay, all I had to do is go away and come back to it. Oh, gosh. Man, what is the KSP? Uh, now, now we've got 100 kilowatts. Tell you this game sometimes. Well, we're not exactly on the node timing. It was a pretty big burn for this. Hopefully, the fact that our trajectory is fairly straight. Well, it wasn't that straight. Okay, we're tilting it like that, so. It's gonna be 
incorrectness to that. Okay, we're going right through the moon encounter. We probably should get rid of this now. Let's let's stop the ion engine. The moon encounter has messed up the node anyway. Let's just get through the moon encounter. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Okay, well that's obviously too touchy. <laughs> um, okay, that's probably the best we can do right there. And how much is it going to cost to capture? Lots. Okay, and how much is that? Uh, I don't think so. No. Oh gosh. Uh, a Earth re-encounter is complicating things. Is that what's happening? I think that's what's happening. Oh shoot. Come on, please show me the series encounter. Up, 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 up. Okay. Oh, it's passed. Uh, okay. We'll just do an adjustment burn somewhere. But 5,551, when it seemed to take... Oh, why do we have 600 units of ore? Ah, uh, <laughs> No wonders. It filled up the ore. Now we can capture, but we would have been able to land without the stupid ore in. Oh, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Better. Don't dump the ore. Oh, it's still on. Um, start hydrogen and locks. Convert that stuff. Or we could do that to restore from boil off though. Yeah, okay, uh, you know what, stop that. Just in case there's boil off, we can restore from that. We have enough to capture now, anyway. And it's the oxygen that's boiling off more than the hydrogen. So that's... great. Why is it 3 kilowatts? We have a big radiator. <laughs> really big radiator. We have 100 MLI layers, too. And it's the oxygen boiling off faster than the hydrogen. By a lot. The 62 kilograms per hour versus 0.15. I know it's the uh, oxygen more because it's a bigger number here too. Yeah, we've had this problem where the oxygen is boiling off more than the hydrogen for some reason. And I don't know why. I hope somebody has an answer for that. I mean, maybe if we don't pay attention to it, the boil off will be alright, but I don't like it. Okay, well, we're gonna apply a mid-course adjustment and hope for the best. What can I do? I mean, it's possible that this would have enough to land. Because the orbital speed and the landing delta V requirement for series is probably not that high. I mean, let's see, series. For a first approximation, I used the escape velocity from a thing as the landing delta V requirement. And the escape velocity is uh, 516 meters per second. Now we have the amount that the ore can provide. If there was no boil off, I think it would be able to, just getting rid of the ore will probably give us a lot extra. And capturing into a low orbit like this costs 5,800. I think getting rid of the ore will lead us to have enough at that point. But only if we don't have boil off. And we now have boil off. So that's the trouble. Let me get this alarm in for this burn. This will probably be just, uh, this 3 meters per second will probably be done with RCS. Alarm clock. I think we should launch another tank to the Joplin though. So we'll launch the Ryan Carry plane with a tank for the Joplin and then we will call it an episode. And ignition. And launch.
Okay, past 20 kilometers in Mach 2. Okay, engines out and rolling. Okay, well, it'll be nice to get this to 4,000 meters per second after a while with the main star where it didn't quite get there. Always felt guilty about that because, you know, meant that we were risking the Orion carrier plane. So we're cutting a little bit close here. Maybe we won't make it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, we won't make it. Gosh darn it. Oh well. I think residuals got me there. I don't know. Alright. Separation. Okay. Control from here. Go grade. RCS. Okay. Fairings. Oh, I should have pressed 5, but I guess they worked this time. Alright. And go. Now we want to... Set the Joplin as a target. A lot of numbers to juggle here. Well, we can't correct our relative inclination anymore. I wonder in the 60s not too bad though. We'll see what we can do. Oh okay, we do have MLI layers. Okay, just checking. Let's get the radiators out. Okay, well, yeah, the rest of the tank is gonna have to do. That might just be enough to plausibly bring this thing down. Okay, well, we'll just get this on uh, the orbit trajectory and forget about it this time. Well, that's the deorbit trajectory with enough RCS for it to control itself on the way down. So we will take that. Let's try to get this over to the Joplin. It's actually more important, because we're so close to the Joplin right now, that we boost up for a tangency point. We need an orbit higher than 459 by 433. Yeah, hold on. We do want this side to dock, so... Let's have the Joplin change its orbit just a little bit so that it can help us out. Should I use the nuclear engines for this? I mean, probably xenon gas is pushing it here. Let's go with the nukes just a little bit. RCS might be enough though. Yeah, maybe RCS is enough. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Maybe having the St. Louis dock to this is better. The RCS is fundamentally, fundamentally imbalanced on that thing. Okay, can't see a darn thing. Just hope the nav ball's right. Contact at some point? Uh, that didn't seem right. Well, let's try some uh, planet. Ah, uh, that's better. Okay, control from here. Ah, uh, it's more of a rotation than anything. Okay, this is gonna work this time, or may our uh, our docking ports are messed up? Oh, there we go. All right, we can tone that down a bit. We have docked. We have another tank on here. Let's get into daylight just to see how it looks now. Okay, the Joplin construction underway. Now with functioning ion engines that don't just draw power from the solar panels. And we seem to have that problem next, so yeah. 
we will try to do things. I, 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 I'm still not thrilled with how ion engines work in general. We might want to tone down how much we rely on them in this series going forward. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.